coming screeched Glick's Norp, his gelatinous form quivering as he dove behind a hollow barrier. The sizzling bolt of plasma sailed over his head, leaving a trail of ozone in its wake. Across the arena, Zorn the Unvanquished let out a triumphant bellow. Ha! I told you I could hit a Zorblaxian at fifty paces. Pay up, Krozakt. The insectoid Krozak buzzed irritably, reaching into his thorax pouch to produce a handful of glowing crystals. Fine, fine. But I still say it was a lucky shot. Your targeting Oculus is clearly malfunctioning. Welcome to Orientation Day at the Galactic Combat Academy, where the universe's most elite warriors came to train, compete, and occasionally settle absurd bets. The massive space station hung in the void between star systems, a gleaming testament to the combined martial knowledge of a thousand alien races. As the small group of new recruits huddled near the entrance, a holographic display flickered to life. The shimmering form of Admiral Pex materialized, all seven of his tentacled appendages wiggling in what passed for an enthusiastic greeting among his species. Welcome, noble warriors, Pex's voice boomed, despite his physical body being little larger than a Terran house cat. You stand upon the precipice of greatness. Here, you will be forged in the fires of. The Admiral's inspiring speech was cut short by a resounding crash. All eyes and various sensory organs turned to see a bipedal figure stumbling through the door, encased in a bulky Enviro suit. Sorry I'm late came a muffled voice from within the helmet. This gravity's a right bastard in it, like trying to walk through treacle while wearing a bloody spacesuit. The newcomer fumbled with the clasps of their helmet, finally managing to remove it with a hiss of escaping air. A shock of unkempt red hair sprang free, framing a face that was unmistakably human. A collective gasp rippled through the assembled aliens, whispers of Deathworlder, and is this some kind of joke filled the air? Admiral Pex's hologram flickered, his tentacles twisting into what might have been a grimace. Ah, yes, our special guest. Everyone, please welcome Liam O'Connor, representative of the human race. Liam grinned, revealing a set of alarmingly sharp teeth to the crowd. Pleasure to meet you all. Now, where's the bar in this place? I'm gasping for a pint after that shuttle ride. Ix Norp oozed closer to Krezek T's gelatinous body rippling with concern. I thought humans were just a myth. A scary story to tell hatchlings. Kozik Santene twitched nervously. Apparently not. But what in the name of the cosmic egg is one doing here? Admiral Pex cleared his throat or whatever passed for a throat in his species and continued. As I was saying, welcome to the Galactic Combat Academy. This year we have a unique opportunity for cultural exchange. Mr. O'Connor will be joining us as part of a new initiative to foster understanding between Ear, disparate species. Liam, who had been unsuccessfully searching for a drink, perked up at the mention of his name. Right you are, tentacle face. I'm here to learn from the best and show you lot what you as humans can do. Now, who wants to arm wrestle? The room fell silent, save for the sound of Glick's Norp's body squelching in terror. Zorn the Unvanquished, never one to back down from a challenge, stepped forward. His massive frame, covered in iridescent scales, dwarfed the human. I accept your challenge, tiny pink one. Prepare to be humbled. What followed was a display of strength that would be talked about in hushed whispers for cycles to come. Liam, despite his smaller stature, matched Zorn's strength ounce for ounce. The contest ended in a draw, with both participants nursing sore arms and bruised egos. Not bad, lizard breath Liam chuckled, massaging his bicep. Thought you had me there for a second. Zorn, still in shock, could only nod in grudging respect. Admiral Pex's hologram flickered back to life, his tentacles waving frantically. Yes, well, now that we've all gotten acquainted, let's move on to the tour, shall we? As the group shuffled out of the orientation room, Krozik found himself next to Liam. Curiosity overcoming his fear, he asked. How is it possible that you're so strong? Your planet's gravity couldn't possibly. Liam grinned. Ah, mate, that's nothing. Wait till you see what I can do with a proper warm-up and a few pints in me. This is going to be a blast. The tour of the Galactic Combat Academy was a whirlwind of advanced technology, mind-bending architecture, and increasingly concerned alien instructors. Liam's enthusiasm never waned, even as he accidentally triggered three different security protocols and nearly caused an interdimensional rift in the quantum physics lab. And this Admiral Pex announced, his hologram leading them into a cavernous room 
filled with swirling mists and flickering holograms, is our pride and joy the multi-environment combat simulator, or Nex for short. Liam whistled appreciatively. Fancy. Looks like something out of a sci-fi film. Ixnorp, who had been keeping a safe distance from the human, couldn't resist chiming in. It's the most advanced training system in the known universe. It can replicate any combat scenario from the harshest environments imaginable. Oh yeah, Liam's eyes gleamed with interest. What's the hardest one you've got? Admiral Pex's tentacles writhed nervously. Well, we have simulations based on some of the most inhospitable planets known to. Nah, I mean the hardest one, Liam interrupted. The one that makes even your toughest warriors wet themselves. There was an uncomfortable silence as the aliens exchanged glances. Finally, Zorn spoke up. There is the Omega scenario, but it is forbidden. No one has ever survived it. Liam's face split into a wide grin. Perfect. Sign me up. What followed was a cacophony of protests, warnings, and frantic attempts to dissuade the human from his suicidal course of action. But Liam remained adamant, and eventually, with great reluctance, Admiral Pex agreed to let him attempt the Omega scenario. As Liam stepped into the simulation chamber, Kozak Tate turned to Glixnorp. Should we prepare a eulogy? Glixnorp's body rippled in what might have been a shrug. I'm not even sure what humans do with their dead. Maybe we should just space him and be done with it. The chamber door sealed with a hiss, and the assembled aliens crowded around the viewing screen. Inside, the mist swirled and coalesced, forming a hellish landscape of jagged rocks, bubbling lava, and noxious gases. Liam's voice crackled over the comm system. Bit warm in here, in it? Reminds me of Magaleaf in August. Before anyone could respond, the simulation truly began. Monstrous creatures, all teeth and claws and... Acid spit materialized from the mists. The air filled with the screech of energy weapons and the thunderous impacts of orbital strikes. The aliens watched in horrified fascination as Liam darted between the attacks, his movements a blur of impossible speed and agility. He seemed to be laughing. Woo. This is better than the pub crawl in Newcastle, Liam's voice rang out, punctuated by the sound of what seemed to be bare fists connecting with alien exoskeletons. Hours passed, and still the human fought on. The simulation threw increasingly terrifying and improbable scenarios at him, but Liam met each new challenge with a quip and a seemingly impossible feat of strength or endurance. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the simulation ended. The chamber door opened, releasing a cloud of acrid smoke. Out stumbled Liam, his Enviro suit in tatters, but a wide grin plastered across his face. Yet he panted, was a proper workout. Got anything a bit more challenging? The silence that followed was broken only by the sound of Glixnorp fainting, his gelatinous body splashing to the floor. In the days that followed, the Galactic Combat Academy found itself turned upside down by their human guest. Training regimens that had been carefully crafted over millennia were casually upended as Liam treated deadly serious combat scenarios like a fun day out at an amusement park. The gravitational crush chamber, designed to test a warrior's ability to function under extreme planetary conditions, became Liam's favorite spot for morning calisthenics. Helps me work up an appetite for breakfast, he explained to a bewildered Kruzgate. The psychic assault simulator, feared for its ability to reduce even the strongest minds to gibbering wrecks, was conquered by what Liam called his foolproof mental defense, loudly singing off key renditions of 21st century pop songs. But it was in the arena of physical combat that Liam truly shone. His sparring sessions quickly became the stuff of legend, with warriors from across the galaxy lining up for a chance to test themselves against the Deathworlder. One particularly memorable match pitted Liam against Drak Thor the Planet Cleaver, a being of living stone whose very footsteps caused tremors. All right, big fella Liam called out as they circled each other in the ring. Let's see what you've got. Just try not to chip a nail, yeah. Drak Thor responded with a roar that shook the arena, charging forward with the force of a landslide. Liam, displaying reflexes that seemed to defy physics, simply stepped aside at the last moment. The massive alien's momentum carried him straight into the energy barrier surrounding the ring, leaving him momentarily stunned. Ooh, that's got a smart Liam winced sympathetically. Want to try again? I'll give you a free shot this time. The assembled audience watched in disbelief as Liam proceeded to run circles around his much larger opponent, peppering Drak Thor with quick jabs and witty one-liners in equal measure. 
The match ended with the planet cleaver flat on his back, having tripped over his own feet in a futile attempt to catch the nimble human. Liam helped his fallen opponent to his feet, patting the stony surface consolingly. Good effort, mate. Tell you what, first round's on me at the cantina later, yeah. Yeah. As news of the human's exploits spread, the academy saw an unprecedented surge in applications. Warriors from every corner of the galaxy clamored for a chance to train alongside, or better yet, against the enigmatic Deathworlder. Admiral Pex found himself besieged by calls from the Galactic Council, alternating between congratulations on the success of the Human Integration Initiative and panicked demands for assurances that said human wasn't going to accidentally conquer half the known universe. But amidst all the chaos and excitement, one question burned in the minds of every alien at the Academy, what could possibly motivate a being from a death world to treat mortal combat as if it were a leisurely game? It was Kruzekte finally worked up the courage to ask. He found Liam in the holographic recreation room, casually dodging simulated asteroids while sipping on a concoction he called a proper English breakfast tea. Excuse me, Liam Kruzekte began, his antennae twitching nervously. I hope you don't mind me asking, but why are you here, really? Liam paused the simulation, turning to face the insectoid alien with a thoughtful expression. Bit of a long story, that. Fancy a cuppa while we chat. Soon, they were settled in a quiet corner of the Academy's Arboretum, surrounded by a carefully maintained ecosystem of plants from a hundred different worlds. Liam took a long sip of his tea before speaking. You lot think Earth is a death world, right? All teeth and claws and danger at every turn. Kozakteed nodded, his compound eyes fixed on the human's face. Liam chuckled. Well, you're not wrong. But here's the thing, humans. We're not just survivors, we're thrivers. Give us a challenge, and we'll not only overcome it, we'll turn it into a bloody sport. He gestured expansively, nearly knocking over a delicate alien fern. Take this place, for example. You've got some of the deadliest combat scenarios in the galaxy, right? But to us, it's not much different from a good game of rugby or a spirited pub brawl on a Friday night. Krozek's mandibles clicked in confusion. But surely you must feel fear. The dangers here are very real. William's expression softened. Oh, we feel fear all right. But we've learned to use it, to ride it like a wave. It's not about being fearless, it's about facing that fear and saying, come on then, give me your best shot. He leaned in conspiratorially. Want to know a secret? Half the time, I'm scared out of my wits in those simulations. But there's no greater rush than staring death in the face and giving it a cheeky wink, you know. As Krozik processed this information, Liam continued. But that's not the whole reason I'm here. See, back on Earth, we've got this saying, the more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in battle, I'm here, because out there. He pointed towards the stars visible through the Arboretum's transparent dome. There are real threats. Things that make your Omega scenario look like a walk in the park. Krozak felt a chill run through his exoskeleton. You mean, Liam nodded gravely. Humanity's been watching the stars for a long time, mate. We know there are things out there that would make even your toughest warriors lose sleep. And when those threats come knocking, well, someone's got to be ready to answer the door. There was a moment of silence as the weight of Liam's words sank in. Then, unexpectedly, the human's serious expression melted into a grin. Plus, I've got to admit, it's bloody good fun showing you lot how it's done. Did you see Zorn's face when I beat his record on the Lava Leaper course? Priceless. Krosgakt couldn't help but buzz with laughter, the tension broken. As they continued to chat, the insectoid alien found himself seeing the human in a new light. Yes, Liam was from a death world, capable of feats that defied belief. But he was also, at his core, driven by the same things that motivated beings across the galaxy a desire to protect, to excel, and yes, to have a bit of fun along the way. His word of Liam's true motivations spread through the academy, the atmosphere began to shift. What had started as fear and disbelief gradually transformed into respect and even admiration. The human's approach to training treating even the most grueling scenarios with a mix of determination and humor began to influence the other warriors. Glixnorp, once terrified of even being in the same room as Liam, now enthusiastically joined in on what the human called endurance pranks which involved elaborate setups that tested both physical stamina and mental resilience. The sight of the gelatinous alien attempting to navigate a makeshift obstacle course 
while Liam pelted him with soft projectiles and bad jokes became a common occurrence in the recreation areas. Zorn, the unvanquished, initially bristling at having his records broken, eventually swallowed his pride and asked Liam for pointers. The unlikely duo could often be found in the weight room, with Liam coaching Zorn on the finer points of what he called cheeky strength. The art of applying force in unexpected ways to overcome seemingly insurmountable odds. Even Admiral Pex found himself caught up in the human's infectious enthusiasm. The holographic commander could be heard practicing Earth idioms, much to the amusement and occasional confusion of the Academy staff. Let's get this show on the road. You absolute units became his new favorite way to start meetings, even if he didn't quite grasp the meaning of absolute unit. As the training cycle progressed, the Galactic Combat Academy underwent a transformation. The once stern halls now echoed with laughter and friendly banter. Warriors who had once approached each simulation with grim determination now tackled challenges with a glint of excitement in their eyes or equivalent sensory organs. But it wasn't all fun and games. Liam's warning about the threats lurking in the depths of space had struck a chord with many of the trainees. They began to approach their training with renewed purpose, pushing themselves harder than ever before. One day, about midway through the training cycle, alarms blared throughout the station. Red lights flashed as Admiral Pex's hologram materialized in every room simultaneously. This is not a drill, his voice boomed, all traces of newly learned Earth slang gone. We have received a distress signal from the Zazian colony in the Omega Centauri cluster. Unknown hostiles have breached their defenses. All senior cadets report to the Hangar Bay immediately for emergency deployment. The academy erupted into organized chaos as warriors rushed to prepare for their first real combat mission. In the midst of it all, Liam stood calmly, a look of grim determination on his face. Korza buzzed up to him, mandibles clicking nervously. Liam. Are you coming with us? This isn't a simulation, it's real danger. The human's lips quirked into a small smile. Mate, this is what I've been training for my whole life. Try and stop me. As they boarded the sleek interstellar cruiser that would take them to the beleaguered colony, Liam found himself surrounded by a mix of excited and apprehensive aliens. Glixnorp oozed anxiety, quite literally, leaving a trail of nervous slime in his wake. All right, listen up. You magnificent bunch of weirdos, Liam called out, his voice cutting through the tension. I know you're scared. Heck, I'm a bit terrified myself. But remember what we've learned fear is just energy. Use it. Channel it. And when we face whatever's out there, show them why the Galactic Combat Academy is the most badass school in the universe. A cheer went up, a cacophony of roars, clicks, whistles, and one very enthusiastic blob from Glixnorp. The journey to Omega Centauri was tense, but mercifully short, thanks to the cruiser's advanced warp drive. As they dropped out of faster-than-light travel, the scene that greeted them was one of chaos and destruction. The Zazian colony, once a thriving outpost of gleaming crystal spires, was now a battleground. Strange, shadowy creatures swarmed over the buildings, their forms seeming to flicker in and out of reality. Void Wraith's Zorn growled, his scales bristling. I thought they were just a legend. Liam's eyes narrowed as he took in the situation. Well, looks like the legend is about to get a swift kick in the arse. Who's up for making some history? What followed was a battle that would be talked about for generations to come. The cadets of the Galactic Combat Academy, led by their improbable human comrade, threw themselves into the fray with a combination of skill, determination, and utterly unpredictable tactics. Liam moved like a force of nature, his combat style a bewildering mix of earth martial arts, parkour, and what looked suspiciously like dance moves from 20th century music videos. The void wraiths, used to inspiring paralyzing fear in their victims, seemed utterly confused by the human's approach. Oi, Smokey Liam called out as he drop-kicked a wraith into a group of its companions. Your mum was a fog machine, and your dad smelled of burnt circuits. The insult, nonsensical as it was, seemed to enrage the creatures, causing them to attack wildly and leave themselves open to counterattacks from the other cadets. Krezark T, emboldened by Liam's example, led a squad of flying insects in aerial maneuvers that would have made Earth's finest acrobatic pilots green with envy. They darted between the crystal spires, herding groups of wraiths into kill zones where Zorn and his fellow heavy hitters could unleash devastating area attacks. Glixnorp, much to everyone's surprise including his own, turned out to be a crucial asset in the battle. 
his gelatinous body, once a source of embarrassment, proved impervious to the wraith's energy attacks. He bounced and rolled through the battlefield, absorbing blows meant for his comrades and quite literally gumming up the enemy's movements. As the battle raged on, Liam found himself face to face with what appeared to be the Void Wraith's leader, a massive, swirling vortex of darkness that radiated malevolence. The creature towered over him, its form rippling with eldritch energies. So Liam quipped, cracking his knuckles, you must be the big bad. I don't suppose you'd consider calling this whole invasion off and joining us for a pint instead. The Wraith Lord responded with a bone-chilling shriek that shook the very air around them. Tendrils of darkness lashed out, seeking to ensnare the human. Liam dodged and weaved, his movements a blur. I'll take that as a no, then. Right, let's dance, you overgrown smoke alarm. What followed was a duel of epic proportions. The Wraith Lord unleashed wave after wave of void energy, each attack capable of annihilating a lesser being. But Liam, drawing on every ounce of his death world honed reflexes and the unorthodox training he'd undergone at the academy, met each assault with impossible agility and counterattacks that shouldn't have worked in any sane universe. As the battle reached its climax, Liam found himself backed against one of the crystal spires, the Wraith Lord looming over him triumphantly. The creature's maw gaped wide, ready to deliver a final, devastating attack. But Liam O'Connor, last hope of the Zazian colony and improbable hero of the Galactic Combat Academy, had one last trick up his sleeve. With a grin that would have made his ancestors proud, Liam reached into a pouch on his battle suit and pulled out. A tiny plastic bottle. Ever wonder why humans love spicy food? Matey called out. It's because we evolved on a planet that tried to kill us every day. So we learned to kill it right back and enjoy the burn. With that, he squeezed the bottle, sending a stream of luminous red liquid straight into the Wraith Lord's gaping maw. For a moment, nothing happened. Then, the Wraith Lord's shriek of agony shook the entire colony. Its smoky form writhed and convulsed, tendrils of darkness flailing wildly. Wherever the red liquid touched, the creature's shadowy substance began to dissolve, eaten away as if by acid. Dave's insanity source Liam explained to his stunned comrades as the Wraith Lord literally evaporated before their eyes. Hottest hot source in the galaxy. Turns out, cosmic horrors from beyond the void can't handle a bit of capsaicin. Who knew? With their leader destroyed, the remaining void wraiths fell into disarray. The cadets of the Galactic Combat Academy, their spirits bolstered by Liam's impossible victory, pressed their advantage. Within hours, the last of the invaders had been routed sent fleeing back to whatever dark dimension they'd crawled out of. As the dust settled and the Azazian colonists emerged from their shelters, cheering their saviors, Admiral Pex's hologram flickered to life amidst the gathered cadets. I, I don't quite know what to say the Admiral began, his tentacles waving in what might have been bewilderment or admiration. In all my years of overseeing the Academy, I've never seen anything quite like this. You've not only saved the colony, but potentially changed the course of galactic history. His holographic gaze fell on Liam, who was busy trying to explain the concept of a victory dance to a very confused Glick's Norp. Mr. O'Connor, I believe an apology is in order. When the Galactic Council first proposed sending a human to the Academy, I thought it was a recipe for disaster. I've never been so pleased to be proven wrong. Liam grinned, giving the hologram a cheeky salute. No hard feelings, Admiral. Though if you really want to make it up to me, how about we install a proper pub in the rec room? I think we could all use a good pint after this. The journey back to the academy was a raucous affair, with warriors from a hundred different species swapping battle stories, comparing scars, and attempting to learn the lyrics to We Are the Champions. A task made considerably more challenging by the fact that some species communicated entirely through pheromones or interpretive dance. As they approached the station, Kurzicht found Liam standing alone in the observation deck, staring out at the stars. The credit for your thoughts, the insectoid asked, settling next to his human friend. Liam was quiet for a moment before responding. You know, when I first came to the academy, I thought I was prepared for anything. Turns out, the universe had a few surprises left. Kurzicht's antennae twitched curiously. Do you regret coming? Nah, Liam chuckled, shaking his head. If anything, it's made me more certain that this is where I'm meant to be. 
The galaxy's a big, weird, wonderful place, and it needs all of us working together to keep it safe. He turned to face Krozokt, a mischievous glint in his eye. Plus, can you imagine the look on the Void Wraith's faces, or whatever they have instead of faces when they try to invade Earth and find out the whole planet is full of nutters like me? As the cruiser docked with the Galactic Combat Academy, Liam O'Connor Deathworlder, hot sauce enthusiast, and now legendary warrior, felt a sense of anticipation. The battle against the Void Wraiths was just the beginning. Out there, in the vast expanse of space, new challenges and adventures awaited. And if those challenges involved impossible odds, cosmic horrors, or the occasional need to turn deadly serious combat scenarios into something resembling an interstellar pub crawl, well, that was just fine by him. After all, he was human. And humans, as the galaxy was quickly learning, had a knack for turning the improbable into the possible and having a bloody good time doing it. As the airlock doors hissed open and the cheers of the entire academy greeted the returning heroes, Leon grinned. Right then he announced to no one in particular who's up for round two.